the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's good to be with you this evening. We're just so delighted. I'm telling you, delighted and exhausted, Lord Jesus, but still delighted to come before you tonight um, to spend time together in our virtual fellowship. I just praise God for each and every one of you. Um, just um just glad to be in the house of you know I'm saying in the house of the Lord because it's my house, but it's our virtual house together. And I'm just really glad to be here. Um I'm First Lady Deidre Harvin of Jerusalem Baptist Church, and I'm a women's ministry leader and the Bible study instructor for tonight. And um good evening, good evening. I see you all popping in. Praise the Lord. My comments are working tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I see Sister Rhonda, um, Minister Donna, Sister Von Zella. Praise the Lord. Sister Gloria, Sister Lavaris. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Um, I just want us to really um, just take a moment. We're going to do before we get in the word. I just want us to do like a faith check in to kind of, you know, let's just talk about where we are, what's going on, how we're feeling you know, so much going on this week and our emotions. I know my emotions is just all over the place and just been trying to balance out praying and seeking God. I even, you know, downloaded a prayer app this week to kind of help me get my prayer life organized because I felt like I wasn't covering enough things, trying to do it on my own or from pieces of paper here and there. So hello, Sister Wendy, Sister Dorothy. And my namesake, Sister Lachelle, how are you doing? Praise the Lord. Um, before, Like I said, before we get in the word, I just want us to kind of talk a little bit. Um, just share with me, you know, how you're feeling. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to surrender my all. Praise the Lord, Sister Jean. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I, um, I just thank God for each and every one of you. And um, but it's it's been a rough week and I, I can't just come on and just teach this lesson and act like this week, you know, and last week didn't happen. You know, we got to um, we've I know our eyes have, you know, seen a whole lot and consumed a lot of things. And um, I want us to be able to kind of, you know, let's go ahead and um, and and, you know, really say if you're frustrated say i'm frustrated if i'm angry if you're angry say you're angry and let's go ahead and push those things out now and um and let's we'll take them all to the lord before i open up in prayer i want to go ahead and start with you know praying here so let's see um i think i've seen too much <laughs> i've <laughs> praise the lord sister tara how are you doing Elder Dixon, hello, Sister Bertha. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord is worthy to be praised. And so we're just going to do a little faith check in first. So y'all just, you know, let me know how you're doing. Sister Avon, how are you? Praise the Lord. Let me know how y'all are doing. Yes, frustrations. We're going to give that to the Lord. It has been frustrating. Hello, Sister um, Marie. How are you doing? Praise the Lord. Glory. I'm glad to see you. See, you stepped out this week too as well and um, joined the live community by going live from your boutique. Congratulations. Praying that God will heal the land. Yes, Sister Lavars. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Healing, definitely what we need. Lord Jesus, heal this land. Oh, God. Happy Friday. Yes, Minister Kathy, we try, we trying to make it a happy Friday. We got to see the joy in the Lord in everything. And so that's why I want us to go ahead and kind of filter out, you know, our feelings, filter out what, what we, you know, what we've been struggling with this week. And, um, and then we'll pray and then we'll get in the word and then we'll pray again after we finish. So just tell me what y'all, let's see, Sister Wendy, it's, it's been a frustrating week. Sister Lavar says, pray God yep, will heal the land. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
I have received some testimonies this week of God truly blessing um, some of the women of God. And I just um, praise God for that. I'm glad that the word of God is prospering in you and prospering in, in your lives and really allowing the Lord to just um, just have his way. And, you know, as we seek him to be our, you know, our provider, we seek him in righteousness and he's been fixing everything else. He's been manifesting everything else. Praise the Lord. All right. Anybody else want to share what they have going on? Anybody want to share their feelings? Because I know I'm not the only one that was tired, frustrated. Seemed like you got blow after blow watching watching the news. You had to stop watching the news. Amen. Sister Vonzel said, I realized that we all need to hold on to God's unchanging hand in times like these. That's all we can do. Hold on, you know. Praise God. That's all we can do because it is it's truly too much to take on. I mean, my God. Sister Glory said, always keep God first, no matter what this world is going through. Amen. Praise the Lord. Minister Hope, how are you? Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God for the praise report. Thank you, Sister Bertha. Brother Dale came home from the hospital today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer works. Prayer works. And I want you all to know it's always a good, safe place here if you want to pray. Hello, Sister Yolanda. How are you doing? And so um, those of you who want to share, you want to type in something, share what's going on. We're going to do a, you know, a, a faith check in now. Um, Minister Hope, how was your first week on your new job? Since you shared your testimony last Friday, your live testimony. And those of you who missed that, please go back next week. I'm um, last week and view that one. Um, last week's session where Minister Hope shares her testimony. So let us know how your new job went this week. God will give us the strength. Amen. We need to seek him first. I know what he can do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then while you all are typing out, you know, how you're feeling, what you're going through, what you want to focus on. Um, like I said, if you got some things going on in you, let's go ahead and take, you know, type those out. If, you know, once the star already said it's been a frustrating week, if it's been frustrating to you, if you've had any anger in you, let's go ahead and type those things out. And we're going to commit those things to the Lord. We're going to pray. And then we're going to get in the word together. Amen. Hello, Sister Rochelle. How are you doing? Sister Rosa, how are you? Sister Vivian, how are you doing? Y'all let me know what's going on with you. Because I want us to really filter these things out. Because tonight we're going to really go into, we talked, we led up last week into, um, and I thought I was going to be finished with um, Fix Your Focus. But the Lord said, nope, still a few more. So um, praise the Lord. And then some of you even text me, thought, is that going to be the end of Fix Your Focus? I really like this. <laughs> so, well, praise the Lord. The Lord has really, he, he's sown a few more seeds in me. So I have a few more to sow into you. Um, and so, you know, we I know last week we talked about um, the last part was opening yourself to the flow. And so we'll go, we'll continue from that point because we're going to go from the focus, fixing the focus part and then the, um, and he'll fix your flow part. And we're going into that transformation part that's in the middle there. So um, praise the Lord for that. Um, so everybody seems to be fine. Everybody's Everybody wasn't struggling like I was this week, watching the news and everything. Everybody's okay. Well, praise the Lord. God is blocking things. Um, that's what we're going to pray. God continues to block things and he continues to transform hearts, transform minds transform the heart of the races, transform um, the hearts of our um, leaders of this country, everywhere, transform us and, um, and really give us a heart of flesh, a heart like his, a compassionate heart. So, amen. Well, we'll just go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and um, get started with prayer. Glory to God. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for our time in the word tonight, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that as we've made it through this week, Lord God, we've been trusting you, Lord God, throughout the entire week. 
Lord God, and, and Lord, this week has been challenging, Lord God, challenging to our faith, Lord God. It's been hard to keep our focus, Lord God. And maybe maybe it's just me. I don't know. But God, I just feel like, um, you know, we've been able, to, we've had to trust you more this week, Lord God so that we can stay focused, so we can be able to love everybody, Lord God, treat everybody the way you want them to be treated, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that as you continue to transform us, Lord God, into your image, Lord God, Lord God, that you reach into the heart, Lord God, of those, Lord God, who have hatred in and remove the hatred, Lord God, and transform the heart and the mind, Lord God, so that they can have love inside, Lord God, not just for people that look just like them, Lord God, Lord God, but for every person, Lord God, they'll see them as equals, Lord God. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will put a repentant heart, Lord God, into your people, Lord God. Lord God, that you'll put a heart, Lord God, of compassion in people, Lord God. Lord God, that you'll heal this land, Lord God, when we humble ourselves before you and pray, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you will touch our um, leaders, Lord God, our political leaders, Lord God, um, those who, who who make decisions, Lord God, concerning our, our, our government, Lord God. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you touch them and fill them with compassion, Lord God. And Lord God, let not their focus be on money, Lord God, not on mammon, Lord God, but Lord God, on mammals, on people, Lord God, that they will think more, Lord God, on people, Lord God, about humans, Lord God, and what benefits us, Lord God, and not what benefits their pocket, Lord God. Lord God, transform hearts, Lord God. Lord God, Lord God, replace, Lord God, wickedness with love, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you with, for good, Lord God, being in the hearts, Lord God, of our politicians, Lord God, that they will seek you, Lord God, that they'll be transformed, Lord God, into creatures, new creatures in you, Lord God. I pray that they will surrender their will, Lord God, their, their eye, Lord God, for gain, Lord God, that they will surrender, Lord God, that to you, Lord God, and seek, Lord God, to have a heart like yours. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for um, placing in us, Lord God, a receiving spirit tonight so that we can receive the word that you have for us, Lord God. I thank you for every woman, Lord God, who is connected tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Praise the Lord. And so I'm sure, praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Robin. Praise God. Good to see you connecting tonight. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, while we've been um, looking at a whole lot of things transpiring, and I said, you know, what's missing? Hello, Sister Lisa. What's missing? So much wickedness and, and hatred just all over the place and um and so much going on everywhere but in the midst of that god is moving even though it's so much chaos it seems to be going on and i think even last week we talked about that though we're troubled on every side you know it's stuff going on everywhere whatever um but we we won't be in despair we won't be dismayed we'll be able to stay focused. Hello, Sister Harriet, Sister Bertha's sister. Hey, Keisha Simon, one of my childhood friends. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Um, It's just so much going on. But the thing is, is we have to keep our focus on the Lord. Um, Love is missing. Yes, Keisha. Yes, love is missing. And truly, when a heart is so full of hatred, we that's why we prayed earlier for the heart, the, the hatred to be removed and be replaced with love and compassion. Praise the Lord. And so um, I want us to focus tonight on when we talked about last week about being open, opening ourselves to the flow of God. And by opening ourselves to the flow of God, I mean, when we're transformed, because, you know, the old Deidre was, the old Deidre would handle things completely different than the way Deidre handles it now. Um, you know, and I know a lot of us probably felt a whole lot of things rising up in us. And yes, we should go and do things. If you felt the need to go and protest, then go and protest because there's a time and I, I would be out there protesting as well. Nothing wrong with protesting, but now, you know, and so definitely go and, and, and but the thing is, I want us to make sure we go and vote 
that we're, we're present when we need to be present in conversations that need to happen, um, things that concern us. But at the same time, I want us to make sure that we are in prayer and we're in communication with God so that we'll be able to handle situations in the right way. And I'm saying in the right way, but in a way that that um, invokes um, progress and, and invokes uh, a better person out of the other person, not just arguing back and forth with people. But what I say may get you to think a little different. Um, I had a couple of conversations with some classmates. And um, and I shared her, her testimony, actually, in our conversation in our class reunion um, group um, was kind of going a little shaky a little bit. But then she was watching a movie and um, it was the movie City Slickers. And when the cows got they were crossing the water or whatever, and one of the cows got away and they had to go and get the cow. And he was able to rescue that one cow. The other cows were safe, but he had to get that one cow. And she said, then the Lord spoke to her and showed her the scripture about how the Lord leaves the 99 and goes and gets the one that's in danger. And then she understood what Black Lives Matter meant and the difference between Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. And so that one conversion this week was worth the conversation and not me just flying off the handle with people. But knowing that, you know, and there were several, I wasn't the only one, but there were several of us in the group that were talking about it. But thank God that the light, you know, God shined the light in her heart and she was able to get it. And so, and and, and that was the thing. And I know you, if any of you, you want to look later on, you can see it on my, um, my Facebook page where she shared her story about how she now, she gets it. And so, um, and that's how I want to be because Arguing back and forth with people and shaking or whatever is not going to make them understand. It's not going to make them understand. How many of us have argued with our spouse or argued with somebody and they still don't understand? You don't understand until you take a moment to calm down and actually listen to each other or calm down and allow the Lord to speak to you. That's how, you know, you, you figure things out. That's how things, the light comes on. But arguing back and forth, trying to shake sense into people, because that's what we want to do. Stop hating me or stop doing this. Stop being racist. We want to shake it out of them, but it's not going to work. You know, it's a, it's a transformation process. And sometimes the transformation may be just like turning on a light. And sometimes some things got to be eaten away. Some things got to be, you know, taken away from, rooted out of you. And so, um. Amen, Sister Patricia. I'm glad you're feeling better. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to see you. And um, so tonight, let's look at um, John. I'm going to look at John chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. And I don't have it where I can pop it up on the screen tonight. So, you know, Pastor Harvin usually has me hooked up with things like that. So I don't have it quite that well tonight. So we'll do it this way. So let's look here because I want us to talk about um, being renewed, of course, and being transformed and surrendering to God. And so in John chapter three, verse nine, remember there was Nick Nicodemus and how he was asking Jesus about um you know, he was asking Jesus, he came to Jesus and he was questioning him. And so let's read it here. And I'm going to read it out of the King James, but I'll try to modify it a little bit and make sure it's understandable. So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, who came to Jesus by night and um, said unto him, Rabbi, know, know that you are a teacher who comes from God. Now, first of all, I want y'all to notice, you know, remember y'all talk about Nick at night. Um, remember that? Well, see, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. So Nick at night. OK, that's a little side something. But um, OK, so he came. He said, I know that you are a teacher come from God. And for no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. And Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, um. How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
So, okay, now mark that, right? Second time, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot, now the first time he said, see the kingdom of God. He said, born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That tells me there, this is a different process. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And he says, marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. He says, the wind blows where it lists and you hear the sound of it. You hear the wind blowing, but you can't tell where the wind is going. You hear it, but you can't tell where it's going, right? You don't know where the wind came from. You don't know where it's going. He said, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. And so I want us to look at another scripture. And we're going to stay in John, but we're going to look at another scripture as well. Ecclesiastes. Amen. I see. Listen, listen and reflect. Amen. Very good point. Praise the Lord. People's ideals are deeply rooted. Yes. Hello, Minister Jacqueline. Hello, Sister uh, Forstein. Praise the Lord for y'all. So let's look at this scripture. Ecclesiastes, he says, as you know, what as thou knowest not the way of the spirit and how bones grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so... Even so, you know not the works of God who maketh all. So when God is forming bones, when a woman is pregnant, we can't even figure out how God worked so that a whole human is growing inside of a woman. So how can we think that we can know the way of God? And so here, you know, we know that this is a birthing process. And we talked about the birthing process last week. When we talked about opening ourselves to the flow. When we talked about opening ourselves to um, opening ourselves to receive the seed that God plants in us. And then opening ourselves again to birth out, right? To open ourselves to give. Because when you birth something, you give it out. And so when you birth a baby, you give that baby to the world. That baby comes out, this, you know, open. So that baby gets life. You give that baby life. It comes out. And so when you birth something that God has planted in you, it comes out, right? So you're open to receive. And then we have to be open to give. And that's part of being open to the flow. But in the midst of that, and in talking about how he says, um, you must be born again. And then Nicodemus said, how can I be born again? Um, can I enter my mother's womb a second time? Well, we know here, this is that spiritual transformation that has to take place. Jesus wasn't talking about, you know, being born of a woman again. He's talking about being born of my spirit again. He's talking about being a new creature in Christ, having a renewed mind, being transformed and not, not being transformed so much on the outside, but being transformed on the inside. And so a lot of times what we get stuck on is, you know, being transformed on the outside. And I tell you, I, you know, I believe in that, you know, when it comes to like outward adornment, that God should, you know, you should be able to listen to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit tell you what you should and shouldn't wear. But now if you're a leader and it gets to be too inappropriate, then I'm going to address it. But really, you know, I'm going to be praying for you so that you can, you know, so that the Lord can, because that's really something that the, the Holy Spirit should be able, you should be able to hear the Holy Spirit say, uh, uh that's not right. That's a little too much. That's not too much. You, you need to change that or, you know, whatever you're going to a conference, you know, maybe you need to have on business attire. Maybe this isn't one for jeans. Or maybe you got on business attire and this is going to be a little more comfortable. So maybe you need to take the suit off and put on jeans. I think we ought to be able to hear from the voice of God when it comes to things. Not only that, but I'm just saying when we talk about outward adornment, 
some things sometimes is either too little or too much. We need to make sure we're hearing the voice of God about how we should adorn ourselves. And nobody should have to tell you that the Holy Spirit should speak to you about whether or not what you have on is what represents him well. And so um, now getting off of that and getting back to what I want to talk about, which is the inward, because once we get the inward right, then I believe the inward, you know, once we get that inner man right, nobody would have to teach you anything because the Holy Spirit would be your teacher constantly. And so we're talking about the um, the transformation, right? Let's look at um, Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And um, let's see. Oh, gosh. And he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. So they were asking him, when is the kingdom of God going to come? And then he answered all of them and he said, the kingdom of God comes, right? Not with observation. So you can't see it coming. And then he says, neither shall they say, oh, it's here or it's there. He said, because the kingdom of God won't be here, there, or on the mountain, as in the um, the woman at the well, when she was saying, oh, we're supposed to worship God on the mountain. But your people worship God in, you know, in Jerusalem. Where are we supposed to worship? And he says, here we go. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Within you. Right? So let's look at Second Peter. Chapter one, verses three through four. According as his divine nature has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It's already in here, right? Through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us the exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, the kingdom of God, this is it. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is in us. Everything, his great and precious promises in us that we might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature is in us. Having escaped the corruption of the world that is through lust. See, we escaped that. We're not dealing with that anymore, right? Praise God. Praise God. Are we getting this? And just to make sure now, because I want us to make sure we're getting this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Transform, transform, right? Renewed mind. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ or woman, he, she is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. And so let's go back to Nicodemus talking about what does it mean, Jesus, to be born again? Right in John chapter three. Can I go back into my mother's womb? Nope, Nicodemus, you can't go back into your mother's womb. But what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to place you in a place where you're going to seem like you, you're going to be in something. And, um, and I talked about this a couple of years ago about the transformation of a butterfly from a cat, from a transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly. And, you know, it's just like when God is going to do a transformation, it's, it's very similar to that of a caterpillar transforming to a butterfly. Because so I want us to see this, right? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Transformation, right? Old things passed away, all things new. And so with the caterpillar, the caterpillar goes around eating whatever. And then the caterpillar goes and attaches itself, goes and finds a, a place that's um, high, that they feel like they're going to be safe and secure away from predators. And it goes and attaches itself to a high place, usually like on a limb somewhere on a tree. And then it forms a chrysalis around it, which is a hard shell kind of around it. And then the caterpillar is inside. And inside there, the caterpillar starts breaking down. And enzymes that's inside the caterpillar come out and break down the caterpillar to, you know, comes out of the, actually, I think it says the enzymes come out of the abdomen, out of the belly of the caterpillar and begin to break it down. And then I heard a man of God say this a couple of years ago at a conference because I didn't know about this part. I knew about the breakdown process, but I didn't know about this thing called the histoblast. And the histoblast restructures what's in the cocoon and starts turning what was a caterpillar into a new creature, into a butterfly, my God. So you have enzymes that's breaking down the old thing, the caterpillar, and you have the histoblast restructuring and rebuilding what was already there into a butterfly. And so, here, and all of this is happening in that chrysalis, which is kind of like a cocoon. All of that is happening in there. And so when Jesus is talking about, no, you can't be, you got to be born again. He's talking about, I got to put you in somewhat like a chrysalis. I got to put you in a safe place away from predators. I got to put you in a place that you're covered up so that I can break down the old man and then transform you into the new person, transform you into the new creature. And you, my God, glory to God. I'm telling you, uh, I, I, I was like, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. God says, and in the middle of that transformation, you it seems like you you can't move because you're in you're in that chrysalis, right? It can't be moved. So you're standing still and you trust in God. And you you, you it feels like everything is breaking down, like everything is falling apart. And maybe it is falling apart because that's the old stuff that needs to be shed off of you. All of the old stuff need to be shed off of us, need to be broken down. All of our old ways, all of the things that we carried with us when we came to the Lord. All of those things got to be torn, got to be broken down. But then there are things in there, even though it's broken down. God says, I'm restructuring that. So maybe now when you had a gift that you used for evil, God says, I'm going to restructure that gift now so you can use it for my good. And so everything that's been in there, because mind you now, nothing on the outside is getting in there other than oxygen. Oh, Lord, my God, nothing is getting in there but oxygen. So everything is happening in there with everything that's already inside of us. All of that is already going in. It's coming. It, all of that is already in you. It's in your belly. And that transformation is happening so that when you come out of that, when that hard shell breaks off, nobody will recognize you. You'll be a new creature. You still the same caterpillar, but you don't look the same. You are a butterfly now. You're a new creature. The caterpillar didn't, didn't come out of there. The caterpillar was changed into a new person. Yes, you can see the old you. 
some of us, the old us ain't far away from us. You know, some parts of us ain't far away enough from us yet. We ain't buried all of We still, we're supposed to bury, you know, the old man's supposed to be buried, right? Some of us still got a foot or a hand up. We still trying to hold on to the old man. We got to bury that old man and let the Lord transform us, right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so in the middle of that, and I just want to share with y'all, how I mean, even how this I thought about it again because last week, I mean, I when God brought these things together to me, but I thought about even in my own life when I was pregnant with my oldest son, and I wasn't saved when I got pregnant with him, I got saved while I was pregnant with him, and so while I was pregnant with him, here I am, I got I got a baby growing in me, and then I met the Lord. And then he started transforming me. And so here I'm carrying a seed, but then God is transforming me. So it's like we both were in a cocoon. I got a baby in my belly and then I'm in a I'm in a chrysalis being transformed. So when, you know, by the time I, me at the, when I got pregnant and me when I had my child, I was a saved person by the time I had my child. So my mindset wasn't the same. In the beginning, I had so much hatred in my heart toward my son's biological father. But by the time I had, by the time I got forth to birth my child, I had already forgiven him, even though he was still acting like a fool. I had peace because I had forgiven him because I had the Lord on the inside of me and I was a new person. And so this is the kind of thing. You know, God wants us to be transformed. And I know I kind of, I might've surprised y'all tonight because I pushed all the scriptures out first. I usually push the scriptures out last, but I pushed all the scriptures out first because this is, you know, this is what God is doing. And God is saying, look, while you've been fixing your focus, right? While you've been trying to seek righteousness, God says, I'm shedding off all those old things from you. And you don't even recognize you you come out true to to be a new creature and then you look back and be like my god did i did i really oh my god thank god for the new me thank god for the transformation god has done a work and you know you can look back and be like lord the old the old me oh ooh. but thank god that you can recognize that you're that transformed being now that you're that butterfly that you can fly around. And the thing is, and even with a butterfly, a butterfly still has a delicate path to, you know, to travel. But a butterfly can fly high above all kinds of circumstances. And the butterfly, and I, I definitely love using the butterfly because the butterfly is displayed with all kinds of colors and stuff. And that's why I think we all like colors and like to be, a, especially as women of color, I think that's why we like colors so much. Um, because it displays, it, it enhances our own beauty. And so however you decide to do, whether you wear makeup or not, jewelry or not, you know, we all love to be adorned in a certain way. We all like certain things. And God saying, look, he said, I want you, your outer beauty. He said, your outer beauty should be a display of your inner beauty. And that's what it says. Don't rely in that other scripture. Talk, don't rely on, on jewelry and, and embroidered hair and all that kind of stuff. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. Right. See, the hidden man of the heart makes you more beautiful because people can have on tons of makeup and look gorgeous. But you can see through their eyes that their spirit is empty or you can see you can see whatever whatever's on the inside. You can see you can see lust in their eyes. You can see emptiness on them. You can see evil in them because it's nothing because what's in your heart. That's what's going to be displayed. It doesn't matter how many layers of makeup, how much clothes or how expensive the clothes are. What's in you is what's going to show. And God says, what I want people to see, I want them to see that hidden glory in you. Let them see that hidden compassion. Let them see that in you because that's that's what makes it seem, you know, when you extend your hand to help somebody, or whatever. See, that's the glory there that shines through you. And that's the thing, you know, you know, whether you got your nails done or not, don't matter. Praise God. All of that should be displayed from the inner beauty on the inside. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you all so much. Glory. Glory to God. Caterpillar. Oh, my God. I see some wonderful comments here. 
caterpillar will turn into a butterfly. It's about time and trust the process. Amen. Surrender to the process. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. My classmate, Jamie Hewitt Keller, missed this one. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, you came in at a good time. Um, awesome, uplifting word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The change in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Forgiveness is the way to survival. And see, and that's the thing. Forgiveness looks pretty on you. Forgiveness is just like having um, having lashes. <laughs> Woo! I mean, because forgiveness look good. Unforgiveness, that stuff settles in your spirit. And I'm telling you, it's like poison. All it does is eat away at you. The longer you keep it in there, it eats away at you. Because I can tell you, I'm so glad I'm free of things like that. that I don't hold grudges against people. I don't care what you do. I just keep going, you know, keep going, praying, Lord, you know, bless them. Sometimes the Lord tell me, no, you bless them. You want me to do it. You go do it. So I have to go do the work. Thank God for the supernatural metamorphosis. Amen. Thank God for the transformation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm becoming a changed caterpillar. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It's the chains are breaking. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My, 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 what a mighty God. He gives us time. God puts us in there and I'm telling you, he puts us in that place and his timing is right. He keeps us in there so that he can shed off all that old stuff. Yes, God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Praise the my God. Because I'm telling you, you have the power to speak life or death. And if, if your heart is just full of things that cause death. And I can tell you in the past, I used to be one of those people. Spoke death to all kinds of stuff and didn't realize it. But you have the power, right? to speak the right things, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You have an abundance of life in you because we got the Holy, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have an abundance of life in us, right? We say we want Jesus on the inside, right? So why do we have to spew out so much stuff that ain't Jesus? So much stuff that's not like him. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not becoming of us as women of God. We're supposed to be the beauty and the glory of the Lord should be on the inside of us. And that's what makes us beautiful on the outside. Amen. Let's see. Oh, pray, unforgiveness makes you old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm telling you. Because it gets in you and I'm all it does is it just burdens you down and it waits. And remember, we talked about how things burden you down. You carrying that stuff on you. It makes you heavy. And then the other time we talked about how it's like painting clay, heavy clay on you. So you're just weighing yourself down. And when you weighing yourself down, you look old. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I just really... You know, when we think about um, our transformation, unforgiveness is like a cancer. Unforgiveness is like a cancer. It just eats away at you. Bitterness, all of those things. It, it's just like a cancer. And we have to you know, when he says you can't see and see when I'm when I'm being born, you know, um, I'm in and we're talking about being open to the process. Right. When when you're being born, you're tucked away. I mean, before you're being born, when you're being, I guess, what is it? What's it called? During that process, when you're in the belly, I forget what it's called. But anyway, pregnancy during that time period, you know, you're being formed. Right. And everybody knows the stages of a baby being formed, right? But that whole process of not just being birthed, but now once you've had the transformation and you have um, that transformation, 
Now you have the ability to continually receive the word from God and birth out new things. Continually receive the word of God and birth out things. God says, I have this for you. You receive the word, you birth it out, right? Receive the word, let it get all, you know, all it's got to go through that gestation process or whatever. If God um, speaks a business into you, you receive that word, right? You go through the process of what you need to do to get that business going. And then you birth that business out. God says, I have a ministry in you, right? I have a nonprofit in you. I have all kinds of things in you. I have all kinds of gifts and talents in you. You receive that seed, right? Receive that seed. Let it go through that gestation process and grow. You, you cover it in prayer. You feed it. You nourish it. And then you birth that baby out. See, because that's what you can do. You can constantly, you know, even if you didn't have children in the natural, when you're a transformed being, being when you transform in Christ, you can birth out a whole lot of stuff. You can birth out all kind of visions and, and, and dreams and goals and birth out things. You can you can do all kinds of stuff. Nothing is impossible, right? Because the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is within us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's where transformation comes in. Praise the Lord. Developing a new life. I'm telling you. It ain't nothing in my old life I want. I thank God for my new life. Praise God. Thank you. Minister Jackie, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All glory goes to God. Glory goes to God. Amen. Khadijah, oh. receive, react, create, sustain, and then sustain. And then after that, we're going to add birth out, give. <laughs> birth it out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I just, um, I'm just so delighted, um, to have you all on tonight. I pray that you all have really, um, thought about, you know, the process and we're ready to surrender to God so that he can take us through that process. Cause some things right now may seem like it's, um, like things may be falling apart or things may not be quite together. Maybe God still has you ha, has you in a, in that um that chrysalis in that cocoon, because He still got those enzymes eating away some old things from you, and then those histoblasts got to restructure them into something for His glory. And so maybe maybe some of us are still in that chrysalis yet. We're not quite out of the chrysalis. We we're not out. We're not the butterfly yet because we're still in the transformation process. Don't fight it. Surrender to it. If something was taken away from you, let it go. If, you know, whatever it was, you know, let it go. Because I'm telling you, God can give you more. God can restore you with more, whatever it is. Because I'm telling you, I even, you know, I lost my oldest son. But I tell you, I have so much joy and peace in my heart because I know that he's with the Lord. And, and I didn't think that God could restore and, and place that much joy on the inside and knowing that. But thank God that I do know that. And so um, I don't have to have my life filled with grief and allowing grief to eat away at me because I have that peace of God in me. And so, you know, there's so much that God wants to do um, through us. And we got, we got to surrender to that process and allow him to really do the work. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you all so much. Praise the Lord. So you all have any prayer requests and definitely have any comments, you know, I would definitely share them. Praise the Lord. Seeing life in a different way. Praise the Lord, Elder Dixon. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Sister Moody from the school, Hopkins Middle School. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. The Lord will protect us. Yes, he will. Let it go. Praise the Lord. Ah, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Amen. Amen. God will restore. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. And there's nothing like inner peace. Nothing like inner peace. Glory to God. Well, ladies, I know I held y'all over a whole lot last week. So I promised myself this week I wasn't going to hold you over too long. Um, but I thank God for each and every one of you. I pray that your spirit is, you know, um, encouraged that you are set on fire, that you're ready to surrender to God, allow him to continue to do that transformation. Um, and just know that, um, you know, because we want to enter the kingdom, right? We want the kingdom of God within us. And that's when we enter into, um, you know, when we fix our focus and say, we fix our focus, right? God will fix our flow. We're, we're getting to the flow part now. I think you all can see it now because we've been doing focus, 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 right? And we're getting to that part where he'll fix our flow. And so, um, and then I know our whole other series can talk about getting the flow of God and all of that I know seems so relevant now. And so, um, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, glory to God. And if I missed greeting any of you, um, hello, God bless you. Um, let's see, I see Darlene, my cousin Darlene, and um, I'm not sure if I missed a few other names, but glory to God for each and every one of you um, being here tonight. So if you have any prayer requests, um, please um, submit those. Hold up, let me make sure I missed some comments here. Let's see. Out with the old and in with the new. Amen, Minister Maxine. Sister Von Zella, God heals and delivers. Praise the Lord. Transformation and restoration. Great word. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And sometimes we have to hear this teaching over and over. Amen. Let's see. Prayer requests. Let's see. Amen. Excellent study. Amen. And praise the Lord. Let's see. Prayer requests. Uh, Dr. Cedric and Nikisha Rivers, who are still battling and and. Um, helping patients that have coronavirus. They deal directly with COVID-19 patients. And so praying for God to continue to strengthen them and give them wisdom and protect them and shield them. Praying for all of our children and young adults. Amen. Praise the Lord. Prayer for my brother Melvin Burton. Very sick going through. Amen. Prayer for our nation. Amen. All right. We'll continue to pray for Brother Dale, even though he came home from the hospital today. Continue to pray for transformation. Praise the Lord. The Douglas family and our nation. Amen. Thank you, my college friend, Veronica Hemingway. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you were encouraged tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, Sister Sister Steen. Thank the Lord for change. Amen. And if you have any other prayer requests, if you want to type them in, I always go back and read the comments to make sure I hadn't missed anything. And I go back and pray if you put in a prayer request or those of you who may be watching the replay, I do go back and read those. And um, and I will definitely pray if you add them in later on. And so um, thank you all so much. And um, I continue to thank and praise God for each and every one of you. So let's pray. 
Pray for our church family and friends. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this time tonight in the word, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for this virtual fellowship in the word, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for the heart of every woman, Lord God, who connected tonight, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you pierced her, Lord God, with your word, Lord God. Lord God, because I know that you're doing a transformation process inside each and every one, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you that as each and every woman surrenders tonight, Lord God, that you will begin that transformation process, Lord God, that you'll continue, Lord God, to break down the old things, Lord God, and rebuild, Lord God, and restructure and transform and transform each and every one of us, Lord God, into the new creature in you, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for those, Lord God, who are on the front line, Lord God, still battling with coronavirus, even though some may think, Lord God, it's over, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that your hand, Lord God, your healing hand can touch and heal right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for your hedge of protection around those, Lord God, who serve, Lord God, selflessly, Lord God, by treating patients, Lord God, putting themselves in harm's way, Lord God. Lord God, may you continue, Lord God, to show mercy and Lord God and be gracious unto them, Lord God, as they have compassion in their hearts to serve, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for that hedge protection around them, Lord God, that shield, Lord God, keeping them from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for, Lord God, those in this nation, Lord God. Lord God, we know so many people, Lord God, are hurting, Lord God. So many people have experienced, Lord God, violence, Lord God. So many people, Lord God, have experienced violence, Lord God, at the hands of racists, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would heal, Lord God, this land. Lord God, go into the heart, Lord God, of those who don't have, Lord God, a compassionate heart, Lord God, that have hatred and racism inside them, Lord God. Lord God, go in there and root out that thing in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, put your heart in there, Lord God. Put compassion in them, Lord God. Put love inside of them, Lord God, so they will know, Lord God, that we are all humans, Lord God. Lord God, we deserve to be treated the same, Lord God. Lord God, continue, Lord God, to make man, Lord God, more like you, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for the families, Lord God, who, Lord God, are seeking, Lord God, you for guidance, Lord God, you for strength, Lord God. And Lord God, I thank you for lifting up, Lord God, each and every one, Lord God, who needs healing, Lord God. May your balm touch them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, heal and touch, Lord God, set free, Lord God, go into every joint and marrow, Lord God. Let your healing power go in and touch every place, Lord God. Root out cancer, root out diabetes, Lord God, root out COVID-19 in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Root out everything, Lord God, that's not like you, Lord God. And Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for your blood flowing, Lord God, through each and every one. Touch, Lord God, every person, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for our young people, Lord God, that you will continue, Lord God, to give them wisdom, Lord God. Give them strength, Lord God. And Lord God, thank you for the boldness in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the hedge of protection around them, Lord God, that they, Lord God, will be able to speak out, Lord God. And Lord God, be safe, Lord God. And Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for, Lord God, for church families, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for your hedge protection, Lord God. I thank you for their leaders, Lord God. I thank you for giving them, giving them, Lord God, everything, Lord God, they need, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for providing, Lord God, everything that they need. And Lord God, I thank you for giving them strength and peace, Lord God, and courage, Lord God, to go a day further. Lord God, I thank you for everything that you have placed inside each and every one of us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are manifesting, Lord God, everything you need, Lord, everything we need, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're manifesting gifts, Lord God. Lord God, gifts and blessings, Lord God. Gifts and blessings, Lord God. As far as you separate, Lord God, our sins from us, Lord God, I call in blessings to each and every one of us, Lord God. Blessings coming in from the east, the south, south, the north and the west, Lord God. I thank you for blessings coming in from every area, Lord God, because Lord God, as we seek you and seek your righteousness, Lord God, I thank you that those things that you have for us will be a magnet to us and be drawn to us, Lord God. And I thank you that those things shall run and run us down and take us over, that we'll be overtaken in blessings, Lord God, overtaken in peace, Lord God, overtaken in joy, Lord God, overtaken in love, that our lives will be our lives will be flooded with those things. 
in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just thank each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The class of 2020. Yes, I thank God for the class of 2020. They've endured a lot. One young man, I know he said he was um, was it born what, right after 9-11. And then they have this born in, you know, in chaos and graduating during chaos when the world seems upside down. But thank God through it all. He's seen us through it and seen that class through it. And he has great things in store because I'm telling you, he has great and powerful things in store. When you have something where the enemy throws out everything, seems like he's throwing everything possible at this year but he god has something powerful that's going to be birthed through these these babies that's going through this year where even you you know i know that they still receive their education but it seemed like maybe part of it was stolen from them i know that god's going to restore all of that to them because there's something powerful about these babies that are graduating right now on every level, there's something powerful that God is going to birth out through each and every one of them because the enemy is fighting it so bad. I mean, we got so much stuff going on every end. You got, you know, you got racism and riots and virus, coronavirus. You got um, some places still experiencing flooding, some places experiencing fires. You got all kinds. And then Still some experience in homelessness and starvation and, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff going on everywhere and layer upon layer of things. But God is faithful and he has something. I'm telling you, I know it's going to be something, you know, 10 years from now. The ones who live through this are the ones that are going to be, you know, running things in the world by God. And they're going to be looking back at just like how we talked back about 9-11. We talked back about things, Hurricane Katrina and those kids that came forth from that. All different things, different stages of our lives. The testimonies will be great of what God has done at this point in time. Please, everyone, yes, go out and vote on Monday for a change. For those who are in the district where you have to vote, please go out and vote. Do not stay home. If you're enraged about anything, you angry about anything, don't miss an opportunity to vote. Um, for those of you who live in the Hopkins area, our JBC Cares Food Pantry will have um, fruit and vegetable boxes tomorrow. We had some last Saturday, which is a blessing. Um, we were able to give out over 300 boxes. And so I'm not sure how many there are tomorrow, but please come out um, tomorrow. I think the time is, let me make sure I got the right time. Um, uh, starting at 11 and it's while supplies last. So if you don't get there early enough, make sure you get there. It was a long line last week. So, and it is while supplies last. So, um, you know, somebody may get something that you didn't get, you know, whatever you, is while supplies last. So, um, Jerusalem Baptist Church, 1051 Hopkins, um, Clarkson Road in Hopkins, South Carolina, JBC Cares Food Pantry. Am I missing any prayers that build each other up? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you all so much. I hope, um, let's see. Oh, and I think for our, um, I want to thank God for all of our um, ladies who chimed in tonight, who connected. I pray that you all were blessed. And I know I've said that before, but I just want to make sure I, you know, got everybody. And um, 
those of us uh, for Jerusalem, I think they're going to be giving out communion tomorrow if you need that for Sunday, because Sunday will be a first Sunday. So I believe the deacons will be giving out communion as well. So um, you can come by and get your communion implements tomorrow. Not sure of the time, so just make sure I guess you check your emails or the remind system about that. I think that's all of the announcements I have for tonight. Am I missing any anybody? Testimony for generations to come. Praise the Lord. God is still in control. Tuesday is election day. So Tuesday is the day we're supposed to vote. Okay. Monday or Tuesday. Whatever day we're supposed to vote, y'all, please make sure you go and vote. I got the days wrong. Yes, the ninth, right. The ninth. Please make sure you go out and vote. Thank you for that. Thank you for the correction. It's Tuesday on the ninth. Please go out and vote. Thank you, Sister Roslyn, for that. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for that. Because I definitely don't want to give out wrong information, but definitely make sure you go out and vote. Voting is our right, and that's the only way we can make a change. Only way we can make a change, of course, well, no, I'm sorry, other than praying, but we got to be out there and make sure we vote. Tuesday the 9th, wherever you're supposed to go and vote, please make sure you do so. Anything else? Praise the Lord. Well, I just thank God for each and every one of you. Y'all trying to hold me over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, glory to God. So I'm going to sign off for tonight. I thank you all and um, continue to be blessed and um, check your polling places. Yes, check your polling places because some are different. So be sure to check your locations and let's vote. Amen. Praise the Lord. So um you all be blessed. Glory to God. And y'all continue to pray. Continue to keep our focus. Continue to focus on God, right? So that he can fix our flow. Amen. Good night, ladies. Oh, yes. And JBC Cares will be drive through. I when I told you that about the JBC Cares box, the drive through at 11 a.m. And um, make sure you um, when you come through, please open your trunk. Love you all. Love you. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. So fruit and vegetable boxes tomorrow. JBC Cares, 1051 Clarkson Road. Have a blessed night, y'all. Good night.